I've said it before and I'll say it again. Experts say a recession is coming, and probably sooner rather than later. It only makes sense because we're in the longest economic recovery in the history of the country. So odds are we will have a recession. So when it happens, what will happen to home values and affordability? Hi, I'm Bob Wolverton. I'm with Pure Real Estate in Bellevue, Washington. Here on YouTube, I'm known as your Northwest Realty Advisor. When we come back on the other side of this upcoming eight second break, we'll talk about what a recession is and historically how it's impacted home values and we'll talk about if homes are even affordable anymore. We got a lot of real estate to cover today, so let's get this show on the road. One of the things we're gonna talk about right from the beginning is the very good possibility we're going to have a recession in the next 18 months. I know, I've done short videos on this topic recently, but we have to realize with the democratic debate starting, with the economy doing as well as it is, with there being question marks about whether the economy will still do well, for example, the Fed just lowered the interest rate because there were some concerns in their mind, I think we're gonna see more and more or hear more and more talk about is the economy faltering? And I think that word recession is going to keep on coming up. So I want you to be prepared with accurate information and not be misled by inaccurate headlines in the news. Now the main reason there'll be a lot of talk about a recession is there have been four major surveys so far this year. One by the Wall Street Journal, one by Duke University, one by the National Association of Business Economists, and one by Pulsenomics, who surveys a little more than 100 market analysts. And they each asked a question in their survey. When will the next U.S. recession begin? Here's a graph of the results of all four surveys. So you have a feeling for what each survey said. Now, to make it simple, what I did is I took all four years, all four time elements, and I combined all the responses for each point in time and divided by four. Meaning here's really the combined number of each year as a percentage of all the respondents to all four surveys. So 21% believe that we're going to have a recession sometime before this year is over. Another 46% believe that we're going to have a recession sometime next year. And then it goes on to 2021 and after 2021. So the reason I'm giving you this right now is we have to see that 67%, two out of three of all the people surveyed in all four of those surveys, said that we're going to come across a recession between now and the end of next year. And let's not forget what next year is. It's a presidential election year, probably the most contested presidential election in our nation's history. So there's gonna be a lot of vitriol, a lot of animosity being served up by both sides, and there's gonna be a lot of questioning over the economy. Why is it good and is it about to come apart? That's going to be part of the political speak. And I want you to have a good handle on what's really going on in the real estate market. Obviously the word recession is going to come up. And when it does, people are going to think about what happened in 2008 and think the same thing is going to happen all over again. The first thing I want you to realize is recession does not equal housing crisis. The definition of a recession is a period of temporary economic decline during which trade and industrial activity are reduced, generally identified by a fall in GDP in two successive quarters. Now, why are so many experts predicting that we'll have a recession in the next 18 months? Well, the reality of it is we're now in the longest economic recovery in American history. And we know the economy is cyclical. It's going to go up and sooner or later it's going to go down. So, of course, there's going to be a slowdown coming. Of course, we, we're not going to be able to keep on this upward trajectory forever. So they do believe there's going to be a slowdown. And that's all that means is that GDP will slow down. However, what I'm concerned about is people will equate the word recession to housing crisis and think we're going to have the same result of what happened in 2008. But if we look at the four previous recessions, three of the four times prices actually went up. Two of those three times they went up almost double the normal historical average. And the other time home prices dropped, they dropped by less than 2%. So the fear that 2008 is going to happen all over again because the word recession is applied, that's not the case. Okay, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned four surveys. The most current survey, which was just done a couple weeks ago, and I did a video on this survey, was the Pulsenomics Survey of Analysts. And they asked them, when will the next U.S. recession begin? And on that, just that one survey, 59%, 9% in 2019 and 50% in 2020, said that it's going to happen in the next 18 months. So what we're looking at is 59% said, yes, the recession is coming. But what wasn't reported in the news is that same day, on that same survey, to those same exact analysts, they asked other questions. And one question was, what was going to trigger the next recession? 
And here are the top three answers. The top three triggers, according to that same exact survey that projected a recession is coming, this is what they said. Number one trigger is probably going to be trade policy. Number two, there could be a stock market correction. And number three, geopolitical crisis. When they looked for a housing slowdown, because that did come up, some people did pick that, that was all the way down at number nine. So there were eight things that were going to happen that were going to trigger the recession before they even got to a housing slowdown. So again, the 2008 recession was caused by completely different circumstances. Primarily, it was caused by fraud in the lending industry. I remember when I began to hear about no doc loans, which meant you didn't have to provide any proof of income. The lender just took you at your word that whatever you said was true. The other thing I remember was the new practice of getting a mortgage to buy the house and then getting a loan for the down payment. In essence, there was no down payment. 100% of the purchase price was being financed based upon income numbers that were never verified. This was just sheer greed and fraud in the lending industry that led to the housing crisis in 2008. Protections have been put into place so that does not happen again. So in this survey, a housing slowdown is not even in the top eight reasons that a recession might take place. Also, those same people that same day on that same survey also projected where prices are going to be over the next five years. And as we can see, they think this year they're going to finish up with about a 4.1% appreciation. That appreciation is going to slow over the next two years, and then it's going to come back and recover to normal historical appreciation, which is somewhere between 3.5% and 4% on an annual basis. The most important thing is the same people that projected the recession was coming also said prices are not going to depreciate. Appreciation is going to decelerate, but prices are still going to go up. So the crash that we saw in 2008, the people actually predicting the recession are saying that we're not going to see that again. All we're going to see is a slowdown in the amount or the percentage that homes are appreciating, not that they're going to depreciate. And Morgan Housel, a well-renowned financial analyst, what he said is very similar to many recessions in history. An interesting thing is the widespread assumption that the next recession will be as bad as 2008. Natural to think that way, but statistically highly unlikely. Could be over before you realized it began. The other thing I want to discuss is home affordability. Because there was a recent survey done by CoreLogic that showed in people's minds the leading obstacle to home ownership is affordability. It's no longer down payment, it's no longer all those other things. The number one obstacle to home ownership by the survey was affordability. And that number jumped dramatically from 2018 to 2019. It went from a little over 30% all the way up to 40%. And it's again, the number one obstacle in buyers' minds. Now, I get it that people are talking about affordability. I get it that people are saying, well, affordability is not where it was 10 years ago. But we have to remember 10 years ago, interest rates right after the housing bust dropped to all time lows and prices dropped dramatically because there were a lot of distressed properties on the market. So very obviously affordability then was better than it is now. If we take a look at affordability going all the way back to when NAR first started recording it, we can see that if we go all the way back to 1990 and we look at today's affordability, and by the way, on this graph, the higher on the graph, the more affordable homes are, we can see that today's affordability index is nowhere near where it was the years when distressed properties dominated the market, the red bars. But if we go back before that, if we go to 2007, 2008, all the way back to 1990, it's more affordable today to buy a home than it was in the 1990s, all the way through the 2000s, right up until the crash. So yes, it's not as affordable as when the houses were cheapest, when there were all of those distressed properties available for sale, but it is more affordable than the normal markets that preceded the boom and the crash. Also, CoreLogic just came out with their graph on the typical mortgage payment adjusted for inflation that buyers commit to now, and they take a look at it from January 2000 they look at it in June of 2006 at the height of the boom. Then they look at it in February 2012 at the bottom of the crash and what it has been since then and what they project it to be in March of 2020. And what we can see is the typical mortgage payment, though above where it was in February of 2012 at the bottom of the crash, is better not only than what it was during the height of the boom, but it is better than what it's prior to the boom in January 2000. Adjusted for inflation, today's typical mortgage payment is less than it was then. And what it's projected to be in March of next year is still lower than what it was in January of 2000. And part of the reason for that is wages are going up. And interest rates, though not where they were in 2012, are still lower. So another thing the National Association of Realtors does is they list every month the typical mortgage payment as a percentage of income. 
And we can see that since June of last year, for the last 12 months, it has been falling. And now it's jumping somewhere between 16 and 16 and three quarter percent, but a drop from 18.2%. But probably the best thing about that historically before the boom and the bust and what's happened since, historically the percentage of your income that goes towards a mortgage payment was 21.2%. So that 16.6% today, we're much lower than what the historic norm was. So it's not the actual price that matters, but the price relative to the purchasing power. Meaning when we put in wages, when we put in the mortgage rate and we put in the price, what percentage of the amount of money you make goes towards your mortgage payment. And as I've just shown you, that number has dropped dramatically and is much lower than the historic norm. And the reason for that is the 30 year fixed rate mortgage rate has dropped almost a full point in the last eight months from 4.75% to 3.75%. And as of last Thursday is down to 3.6%. And here's an interesting quote from Mark Fleming, the chief economist at First American. If the 30 year fixed rate mortgage declines just a fraction more, and some people are projecting that will occur, consumer house buying power could reach its highest level in almost 20 years. So currently, not only is affordability not a challenge, there are certain markets where prices are way up, and I understand that, but we're talking about overall in the country. Not only is affordability not a challenge, it might be the best it's been in 20 years if the interest rates just drop a little bit more. And that's big. So today we've talked about when the next recession is likely to occur. We've discussed how the term recession is defined by a reduction in the GDP of two quarters or more, that it's not defined as a drop in the housing market. We've looked at how home values have appreciated during three of the four recessions prior to the 2008 collapse. And we've discussed how when you consider wages, home prices and mortgage interest rates, home, homes are more affordable now than they've been in a long time. I hope you found value in today's video. If you did, click that subscribe button and click that reminder bell so you'll be reminded when I post new videos. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. That's feedback to me that I'm giving you information of value. And finally, please share this link with someone you know who can benefit from the information on this YouTube channel. You can find my email address and my telephone number in the description below. Call me or email me. I'd love to hear from you and I'd love to represent you in your next real estate transaction. I'm Bob Wolverton. I'm with Pure Real Estate in Bellevue, Washington. Here on YouTube, I'm known as your Northwest Realty Advisor. Every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. I post new videos about buying, selling, or investing in real estate, as well as some home tours and listing videos. I'll see you next week.